Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin, wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you'll never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but my hand and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they're completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I've given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself, and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I'm with you for a little while longer. You will look for me, but just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now. Where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment, love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Memory is a strange thing. How or why our minds will imprint certain moments and not others. Why some details will stand out clearly and vividly while others fade away. Or how a particular smell or sound can instantly transport us to a time or place or person from our past. Or even how two people who go through the same experience can remember it so differently. This week, perhaps more than any other in the church year, is a week of remembering. Of remembering Jesus' final days and on this night, on Maundy Thursday, one of the things we remember is that final meal that Jesus spent with his disciples, that meal they shared. And I wonder, what do you think Jesus would remember most about this night? 
Would it be the sound that the water made as it splashed in the basin when he was washing their feet? Or maybe that pang in his heart as he washed Judas's feet, sensing that fear he knew it would soon lead Judas to betray him. Does Jesus remember the room being crowded with his enemies or with his very best of friends? Does he remember how much they praised him and made him laugh? Or that only in the end they betrayed him and denied knowing him? On this night of shared food, shared laughter, shared lessons, that would eventually end in sorrow. I wonder what was it that would have stood out most in Jesus' memory? Was it the bitter or the sweet? To remember, that's a word that means call to mind. And sometimes calling something to mind can be really comforting, right? When we remember a happy moment or a time, maybe a time when we felt really loved and cared for. Calling something to mind is also, though often, a wistful act, right? The act of mem remembering often brings with it a longing for what once was but no longer is, right? We know that Nostalgia that is on one level comforting, but that also often leads us to melancholy. Remembering, calling something to mind, it can also be a courageous act. For when we have suffered harm in our past, remembering can be a painful thing. It can even be traumatic. The truth about remembering is that it is both bitter and sweet. Sometimes more one than the other, but almost always some mix of the two. And the thing that is so challenging about memory, we don't always remember the moments we wish as clearly as we would like. And those moments that maybe we'd rather forget, well, they continue to haunt us. Sometimes with intention, we can maybe sear right, a particular moment that we wish to remember. We can sear that in our brain. But I think most of the time, we don't really have that control. We can't control what imprints on our mind and in our heart and what doesn't. And this is why so many of the memories we carry, especially those ones that are the most powerful and poignant ones, are often that combination of bitter and sweet. For the disciples, many of the events of these days are ones that they would likely rather forget if they could. Certainly many bitter memories threaten to overshadow any sweet ones. But as much as they might want to forget, they also can't ignore the fact that Jesus himself has told them to remember, to remember the events of this bittersweet night, to repeat that act of foot washing, and that when they do that, to remember his example of humble service. To repeat the meal that they shared, the bread and the wine, and remember his act of self-giving love. These are traditions that have been passed on down through generations of disciples, all the way to us who gather here this night. And so I think it's a worthwhile question for us to consider. 
What purpose does remembering these events serve? Why does it matter that we do this at all? Why does it matter that we remember this night? The thing is, tonight's remembering is actually about more than just calling to mind events of the past. Because we know, because Jesus promised it would be so, that as we gather, as we share in the Lord's Supper, Jesus meets us here. In this holy gathering, us who are here in the building and on Zoom. Jesus is with us, here and now, touching us with forgiveness, washing us with grace, feeding us with love. Yes, we are remembering the gifts that Jesus gave his disciples to sustain them after his death, but these same gifts are given to each one of us again this night to sustain us in our pilgrimage of faith. Tonight we remember, and in this remembering, we create new memories. We are not stuck in some past moment, but we carry into the present and into the future Christ's self-giving love. By offering compassion and mercy and even forgiveness to those who have done harm. We carry this love into the present and the future by caring for one another and for our neighbors as Christ has cared for us. By sharing the abundance of God's gifts with those in need. And by honoring both the bitter and the sweet that make life what it is. Tonight, as we remember the bittersweet final night Jesus spent with his disciples, we're promised that in the bittersweetness of our own memories, of our own stories, we are blessed. For Jesus is with us this bittersweet night enfolding each one of us with grace, with mercy, and with love. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 358, Great God, Your Love Has Called Us. I'll invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together.